You're watching CHCO TV's Gavel to Gavel coverage of the October 21st, 2024 regular council meeting for the town of St. Andrews. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Today's meeting begins with a public hearing of objections to Special Business Improvement Levy Bylaw 24-05. Council will later move to grant leave for the second and third readings of this bylaw. Under Planning and Community Development, Councilors Harland and Heenan will move that Council grants leave for the second reading of Amendment Z22-10 to the Zoning Bylaw for Harbor Town Builders at 236 Mowat Drive. Under Public Works and Public Safety, Councilors Bennett and Neal will open a discussion on Motor Vehicle Bylaw 18-01. Now let's join Council at the W.C. O'Neill Arena Complex Council Chambers. All right, welcome everyone. This is the regular council meeting for the town of St. Andrews. Here we are on provincial election night, Monday, October 21st, 2024. Uh, this is taking place at the WC O'Neill Arena Complex Council Chambers uh, and also being streamed through Zoom and Facebook. If anyone has any questions pertaining to tonight's agenda, please email pnopper at townofsanders.ca and we'll check at the end of the meeting if anyone had sent in any questions. Uh, the recording of attendance, all members of council are here and in person. Thank you very much, council. And I do want to recognize that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Beskotomogadi people. Approval of the agenda, I'll be looking for a mover for this uh, fairly small agenda for a regular meeting. Uh, Councilor Hurdle and seconded by Councilor Neal. Any additions or changes to the agenda? I'll call the question then. All in favor of approving the agenda, please signify by saying aye. So everybody, agenda is carried. Disclosure of conflict of interest. Seeing none, uh, no presentations. We already did the minutes and the communications the last, as well as the staff report. So we jump right ahead to the introduction, consideration of passing of bylaws and motions. The first one uh, is on page three of your package, which is Council Harland. Thank you, Mayor Henderson. So this is reference number PCD 240702. The subject is Amendment Z22-10 to the Zoning Bylaw Z22-01, PIDs 1502508 and 01325406, 233-236 Mowat Drive, Harbortown Builders Second Reading. The background is as follows. The Town of St. Andrews has received a rezoning request for PIDs 1502-5083, and 01325406 for 236 Mowat Drive from Harbor Town Builders. They are looking to create a small subdivision of two-story homes. The bylaw process has been as follows. Public presentation August 6, 2024. Views of the Planning Advisory Committee August 21, 2024. Public hearings of objections September 3rd, 2024. First reading October 7th, 2024. Second reading, third reading, third and final reading. Prior to the third and final reading, Council will need to approve the terms and conditions as outlined in Appendix C1. And the action is, the motion is as follows, that the Council of the Town of St. Andrews grants leave for the second reading to amendment Z22-10 to the Zoning Bylaw Z22-01 for PIDs 1502-5083, 01326214, and 01325406. 236 Mowat Drive, Harbortown Builders, and I so move. Thank you. Could I have a seconder for that motion? I've got Councillor Heenan just beating up Councillor Kumashell. Uh, discussion on this one? Just a quick, uh, a quick couple things here as council. Um, if you want, we can go to third reading tonight as well. Uh, if, if, if everyone feels obviously okay to proceed, we don't have to. Uh, the only thing that I know is under terms and conditions, it may not be highlighted and there is a diagram on page 11, but I was just wondering if that dumpster that you see kind of highlighted to the right, um, maybe it's not a term and condition, but if, if uh, the developer who has been working very good with the neighbors, as we all know from the hearing of objections, uh, if there's a way to move that dumpster to the main parking lot area, um, and the reason I'm asking that is just because there is a resident right there. You can see their driveway, and there will be a, a dumpster right to the left of their driveway that would have 10 people, uh, 10 homes, putting their garbage in there. And I just wonder if 
you put it more in that main parking lot where maybe those two little trees are or something like that, where it puts it in the middle of that little open area, gets it away from the, the residents a little bit. It will it would have a, a barrier around it. I don't know if that's the word, but it, it screening. There we go. Thank you. But I just, if there was a way to do a plan where it gets a little bit further away to away from that house, I think it, I think it would make sense. Cause if I lived in that house, I'd like it probably a little further away. I, I don't know if it has to be a term and condition, but maybe a conversation, does it have to be a term and condition, Mr. Knopper? Or can it just be a conversation? It doesn't have to be a term and condition. Uh, Mr. Gopin, do you have any comment on this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's something that you could ask the developer to do voluntarily because um, I know there was some back and forth and and I think I I know that the dumpster was moved once already to accommodate concerns so you could ask them voluntarily you could have it as a condition um, I think to make them go back and get a new site plan at this point would probably be um, that would be unnecessary and just an extra cost that could be avoided but you could make it we could add it to the schedule um, that goes with the bylaw. Uh, I, I wouldn't want a site plan for it either because it's just a little a little drawing. It does add cost, but I, I don't know. If it's just a maybe just or just something council could just note that if there's a way to move that away from that house, I just think if you look at that parking lot and that green space, there's a lot of room there, and it makes sense if it's let's be honest, if it's their garbage, it'd be closer to them than the neighbor, right? So. Um, but that's the only thing. I don't think we have to necessarily add in, but maybe a voluntary note or whatever you called it uh, might be suitable. That's just my opinion. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way or not. C Councilor Hina? Your Worship, I feel that um, us having it in the minutes and, and they have always been very fair, yep. I don't think there's any necessary need for us to do another site plan. That's just my opinion. Thank right. you. I agree. Council Blanchard? Yeah, just are you are you uh, speaking? Um, I'm just trying to figure out which parking lot you're speaking of. There's there's the, the the main parking lot, and then there's the smaller parking lot to the left hand side. The dumpster is currently located sort of you know just to the one side of that smaller parking lot. Are you talking about the bigger parking lot? I'm talking about the bigger one. Yeah, more in the more in the middle. Um, Would the one on the side be a bit like just to go to the other side of that? Well, then I know may, you're may, maybe, uh, but then you're putting it closer to the closer neighbor to the other up, up yeah. there. There's there's a couple neighbors up there that yeah. had some concerns about the lighting already. Okay. Uh, again, maybe it's not possible. I just putting myself in this one that we're seeing right here. If you can move it a little further away, I, I bet you it was my house. I'd appreciate it. Deputy Mayor, did you have a question? Oh, sorry, I thought you did. Oh, I just. Yeah, I don't know if Mr. Knopper can bring it up or no. No, that's okay. You're up here behind the trees, or yeah, one quick sec. Yeah, but anyway, we'll take that offline then based on everything, if that makes sense. Um, all right, so is there any other discussion on this, though? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor of... A Going to second reading, please signify by saying aye. aye. Okay, no one's opposed, so we will go to second reading on that. Give me one quick sec here. I would agree with that. So this is a bylaw uh, to, or sorry, this is a bylaw to amend bylaw number Z22-01, being the zoning bylaw for the town of Sanders. Uh, read by title here the. Second time, the 21st day of October of 2024. Council, would you like to go to third reading? Just a quick consensus of hands. Any opposed of going to third reading? Seeing none, let's go to third yeah, reading. You want to Your reading? Worship, before you go to third reading, you have to have another motion to accept the terms and conditions as per Schedule C prior okay. to third reading. So let's, uh, do you want to do the terms and conditions before the third reading? Okay, so Council Harlan, would you move what, uh, or do you want to move what Mr. Knopper just said? Versus that? Sure. Um, that the Council of the Town of St. Andrews approves the terms and, conditions. Terms, and conditions. terms and conditions as per Schedule C to uh, bylaw amendment Z22 10 for PIDs 1502508301322151 and 0132254406 for 236 Mo Drive, Town Builders. What he said. And, and I so move. Could you, could you please repeat that, Councilor? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Seconder, please. I've got, uh, ooh, that was a lot. Let's go with, uh, de let's give that one to the Deputy Mayor. Deputy Mayor seconded. Um, any other discussion on that one? Councilor Heenan? 
I'm just confused. It says on the top title bylaw number 22-10 and it's the bylaw Z22-01. I'm just worried that Oh. So this is bylaw so number Z22-10, which is amendment to Z22-01. So you're always amending your zoning bylaw yeah. from that. Yep. So what that means is the 10th time we've amended it Correct. <laughs> since the last time we were implemented. All right. Um, sorry, where were we at? We were first and seconder. We were discussion. Uh, who was first and seconder? Yeah. Uh, uh, third reading. You haven't. Okay, sorry, Harland. Then it was deputy mayor, wasn't it? Did I give it to him? Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor of accepting those terms and conditions, please signify by saying aye. Any opposed? That is everyone that's carried. And now, Council Harland, if you want to read the same thing, but say third reading, we can sure. close this file. That the Council of the Town of St. Andrews grants leave for the third reading to amendment Z22-10 to the zoning bylaw Z22-01 for PIDs 1502508301326214, and 0132-5406-236 Mowat Drive, Harbor Town Builders, and I so move. Seconder. Okay, Councilor Gumashell winning that one. Uh, discussion on going to third reading. Deputy Mayor. Does that mean your question about um, moving the dumpster will be included in this? It just means that that's going to be a conversation that's just... Sanders, that right? You'll, yeah. you'll include that in your conversation? Yeah, when I when I get in the approval, it won't be a condition, but I'll just note in the email that it was a conversation and that council you know, if we want to discuss further, council would appreciate it. Yeah. If Thank they you. can find a way to move it further away from those homes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other any no problem? Any other discussion? Council Grew Michelle. I, I think just for the purposes of the minutes we should add in that uh, we heard from all the neighbors and everyone was in strongly supported this uh, proposal. Good news by you saying that will be included in the minutes. There you go. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, I will be calling the question then. All in favor of going to third reading, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? That is none. Here we go. This is uh, by title. Bylaw number Z22-10 is a bylaw to amend bylaw number Z22-01, being the zoning bylaw for the town of St. Andrews. Now read the third time on the 21st day of October of 2024. So we're done uh, the planning and community development piece. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gopin, for joining us. I don't think There's we need a printing out. So Thanks, Andrew. Enjoy your election evening. Thanks, Andrew. All right, we're skipping. Night, everybody. Should be exciting. <laughs> we're, we're skipping over the deputy mayor's uh, portfolio, um, and we're jumping right into public works and public safety, which is just a discussion. In regards to bylaw number 18-01, a motor vehicle bylaw for the town of St. Ayers, PWP, PWP S24108. And uh, this has been led by Mr. Knopper. Mr. Knopper, the floor is yours. Thank you, Worship. Just give me a second. I want to pull up a picture for you. Uh, so we'll share screen here. Uh, where do we got it hiding? Uh -oh. Back in soon. There we go. And she's green. All right. Uh, so, Council, as part of the motor vehicle survey that was done in 2023, um, there's been a number and the countless letters that the town receives in regards to speeding within the community. Um, specifically within the town plat. Uh, so recently this summer, and actually into the sorry into the fall here, we brought in the uh, Southwest New Brunswick uh, Service Commission's trailer, their speed trailer. Uh, you have the results as part of your your documentation here. Um, the results of that are, are interesting. So it was set up on Par, um, Montague, and uh, Mowat Drive. Uh, what it was showing was trying to see were there speeders in the community, how fast were they traveling, were they traveling regular speed limits, uh, 10 kilometers above, 20 kilometers above is what they really measured. Um, the most consistent one that we saw that actually saw of concern, so we'll start with this one, is uh, Mowat Drive coming in from Shamcook. 
so that one showed almost 30% of vehicles traveling above uh, 10, per, 10 kilometers above the speed limit posted. So that's the change from the 70 to the 50. So we did set back the trailer uh, farther back from the 50 kilometer zone uh, and it was hidden a little bit so people couldn't see it until they rounded a bit around the corner. So then it was on them. So I think that particular trail and that particular setting showed you how people are really perceived of driving coming into changing sections of of speeds within the community understanding that par and uh, montague street didn't show the same results i in my humble opinion i think part of that is because it's visible you can see it and you can see it from a distance so people were slowing down with other vehicles traffic coming in but over the course of many, many years of working for the town so far, there have been lots of letters that have come in of perceived speeding, concerns of asking the town to put in speed bumps, speed measures, something to slow traffic down. So I went back to the transportation master plan uh, that was done and to see what options they had for uh, traffic calming measures or just slowing speeds in the community. For the most part, they were aiming at narrowing curves, uh, curbs, narrowing streets, uh, creating um, interesting crosswalks and other unique things you can do with street ends and, and uh, intersections. But with this, the way our streets are, with the way we do plowing, with the cost of installing those like curb and changes uh it's probably not necessarily financially feasible well it, it's not financially sound within it to test that right away so going back and looking at the transportation master plan one of the biggest things they first said was why don't you make harriet and reed a four-way stop so we're talking you're right by the arena here just outside here at our main one of our main intersections of making that a four-way stop it also suggested making it a um, roundabout as one of the other options, but that becomes extremely difficult. We don't have the space transport. We'd have to gather land to be able to do that, and it's difficult with transport trucks to make those in, the, in that tight space. So the easiest and most cost-effective solution would be to make that a four-way stop. One of the reasons that is also suggested and why we're bringing it forward now is Council's looking at a crosswalk here at the arena right across the street here. And with the way people come around that three-way stop coming up this uh, up read, uh, people are picking up speed. So it's, it's one of those aspects of a safety that we could look at to making that a four-way stop. And especially in the summertime, I, I, know a lot of, I know a lot of residents love the way the flow of the traffic is right now, but if you really look at how traffic flows more in our shoulder seasons and in the summertime, a lot of people are perceiving that as a four-way stop already with the giant crosswalk, which is also causing potential hazards and accidents waiting to happen. The number of times I've almost been hit is, I can count. Um, and I bet you everyone else in town could count how many times they could have been near misses. Um, so that's one area that we're looking at as something to look at for the motor vehicle bylaws if council is interested in a four-way stop there. The second one on your map, uh, so for those that are looking at the picture here, the red dots are the stop signs that are located within the town plat. The yellow dots that are located are suggestions for council to consider for stop signs in the area. The third coloration you see are the blue lines along Prince of Wales Street and King Street. Uh, along with Carlton Street and uh, Augusta Street, which are your school zones. Those are 30 kilometers speed zones. So second stop sign consideration for council as we're looking at the motor vehicle bylaw is Harriet at Water Street. So with uh, it's definitely in the season, again, shoulder and, and uh, summer seasons. A lot of tourists and a lot of people are slowing down, reading the signs that are there, trying to find their orientation of which way to go and then proceed to go most of the time, usually stopping. You also have an angled crosswalk there that uh, expands across Water Street, heading towards Joe's Point Road. That is frequently used by walkers and travelers. Now, most people are pretty respective and do stop for those uh, folks crossing. Uh, but again, for those that are not used to the community and, and used to the travel of the roads, perhaps a stop sign there, making it a three-way stop to slow traffic again, and allowing people to see directionally where they're going without hindering the flow of traffic might be a consideration. The other options that are before you here, uh, I'm not suggesting any more stop signs on Water Street, uh, just so everyone's aware. What is being suggested is, and with the biggest complaints we get are on the long stretches. So the long stretches of the community, you've got Water, Queen Street, Montague, Parr, Carlton, and uh, Prince of Wales Streets. Uh, what we're suggesting is every three blocks, 
you make a four-way stop on the longs. So at Elizabeth Street at Queen, Elizabeth Street at Montague, Elizabeth Street at Parr, and a three-way stop at Elizabeth Street at Prince of Wales Street. So I'll start with the top at the Prince of Wales Street. So the reason for the consideration of the three-way stop there is entering a school zone. We actually don't have any signs that indicate you're entering a school zone, and you are coming down a hill approaching uh, multiple schools, and uh, there is a sidewalk there, which does make it nice for pedestrian traffic, but there's there can be hill speeders and coming up to that. So. Uh, perception could be is that you know you're slowing traffic for the safety of the school kids and and coming up to that so that is one option coming in the opposite direction from Sophia Street we actually have a 30 kilometer uh, school zone sign there and what we have heard is that this particular stretch of road has a lot of people that do walk on it the road is not quite wide enough to have a, a sidewalk on it and I know council is choosing during budget here to see about widening the road but in course of that, we also hear that a lot of people have been known to or perceived to be speeding up that road. So by installing a four-way stop there, you would also be slowing traffic coming around the point. You would be providing a 30 kilometer speed zone for the, the elementary school and the schools, and then also stopping traffic and giving people an opportunity to see what's coming at them. So for that area, that's why those were selected. For the main lengths of Parr, uh, Montague Street, and Queen Street, those are the three streets we hear the most complaints about speeding. By establishing a three block, every three block you have a four-way stop. So from Harriet Street to Elizabeth, three blocks. From Elizabeth to King, three blocks. You're at a stop sign again. Periodically going up to Sophia, three, except for the one at Frederick and um, uh, Par Street where there already is a four-way stop that is actually to help with the school bus turning up to uh, Carlton Street for the elementary schools otherwise carrying it through to Sophia Street you would have another three-way stop we notice more and more of the from the perceived speedings is definitely what we get told from NBCC students trying to get to school or teachers at that um, but we also have perceived speeding up and down those streets Queens a little bit less in the summertime because of the, the a lot of people parking on one side of the street and the limited flow of traffic that it allows. But those two, Montague and Empire, are always still perceived as you're going too fast. So in order to slow traffic at an affordable cost of signs without doing damage to the roads and installing speed bumps or other traffic calming measures, this is an effective thing we can install, have in place, and see how it goes now one one of i will note one of the most successful four-way stops that we installed was the montague street at augusta street this year that slow traffic on augusta street people were very appreciative that it stopped at the end there and has helped slow all of traffic around so so that one was successful we know the augusta street at water street was not successful because people want to go up and around the point they want that straight through shot which is fine, and, that, and we took it down and it worked and went back to normal. But council to you, this is where staff are seeking your opinion before we start bringing forward the motor vehicle bylaw for any additional changes, but I wanted your opinion on stop signs and the sense of traffic calming measure. Perfect, and just for process, this would be um, enough changes to the motor vehicle act that we would go to three readings versus just a... The whole motor vehicle act's gonna come back for yeah. three readings. It's gonna have to go through a public hearing of objections process council you have the option if you want us to host uh, open house sessions we can do it in different sections and styles because there are other things that we want to bring forward like um, uh, let me just pull up my hair uh, additional notes uh, parking trailers on streets overnight camping on streets um, we're getting uh, I want to look at Douglas Street to put half of it no parking because it's already a dead end zone and there were a number of RVs that got stuck down there this year. Um, and there are some other changes here, but I think the most critical thing that we need to look at was the perception of speeding in your community and what you can do about reducing speeds and making people feel safer on the roads, both walkers and drivers. Perfect. For So for the public, this is just uh, would be some council direction on what gets released to the public as part of the process as, uh, as per stop signs essentially at the end of the day for most of this so uh, this doesn't mean that it's necessarily happening there's still a process that would be involved after this uh, for anyone that's watching um, council over to you I think I got to break it out into a few parts here to get direction um, the first one I'll call it read to Harriet the four-way stop at that corner just down here from the arena 
Um, looking for a little bit of consensus if anyone believes that that should be a four-way stop or um, leave it as is, which is a three-way stop. Councilor? Just to, for clarity, um, we're breaking this up into locations, but do we have the opportunity to talk about it in general as well? Oh, you can talk about it in general, yeah, for okay. sure. If you, do you want to go talk about it in general before or at the end? <laughs> whatever makes, whatever is the mayor's pleasure. You, you, you can, uh, I will follow your direction on this one. Um, thank you. And I also want to thank town staff for bringing this forward. I think this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's a potential solution for what we want to do. And I really um, applaud this coming forward because I'm obviously a big advocate for, for safety on the streets as well. And I think this is, um, solves a lot of some, some of the issues that we have. I have some concerns with how it comes across. Uh, so when I think about, um, the number of stop signs that you that, that are being proposed in, in town um, and I think about the visibility of the current stop signs that we have now there's a lot of blind corners there's a lot of you kind of have to roll into the intersection to see what's coming which isn't always the the safest approach in our communities and at the same time we're up against you know do we really want to start cut, cutting hedges and trees back and things like that too so I think there's a bit of a um, there's a, a conflict there between those two things. If we're putting so many stop signs in, um, do we have a sense of how much cutting we're gonna need to do to make these safe? Um, and along with that is, if the purpose of this is to slow down traffic, then my, my initial thought is to then, well, why don't we, instead of, instead of this approach, um, lower the speed limits in the community. There's a, a significant number of communities, not only in Canada, but globally, that look at a res residential areas and see anything above 30 kilometers an hour as, as too fast. I definitely would be, would be one of those people because one of the things I think is missing in this report is data on the incidence of serious injury and fatality as it relates to speed. Um, when you look at, and again, I'm drawing from memory, so don't, don't quote me on this, but if you look at an increase in speed between 40, km an hour, 40 kilometers an hour to 60 kilometers an hour, the incidence of serious injury and, and fatality goes up by almost twice as much. Um, still a low percent, right? We're talking maybe 10 to 20 percent, but we're talking serious injury and fatalities of pedestrians and people that live in our community, which I think is far too high. Um, and then we look at as you know, I think in the report it talks about, uh, and this is somewhat at RSC's direction too, that you know, uh, four percent of speeders, I think, on on um, on uh, on Par Street were going uh, in the in the one to, to ten kilometers above the speed limit. So it's not a high risk area. I just have a bit of a concern about the way that that's worded because you're still talking about up to sixty kilometers an hour, and if you break this out by uh, not percentage but by numbers on par street over a week not quite two week period you have 345 people driving up to 60 kilometers an hour you have 33 people driving up to 70 kilometers an hour and you have eight people driving 70 to who knows how much faster than the speed limit um, stop signs will absolutely stop that right mm -hmm. but again you know is is that the right is it can we just look at potentially just lowering the speed limit if it's also able to accomplish the same thing without having to necessarily reorganize the infrastructure of the downtown core because I think that and again talking about the perception of, of speed and I think that you're right people see think people are speeding but they might not might not be but I think that comes from the fact that most people or many people think 50 kilometers an hour is too fast right and that's why they see somebody driving 50 kilometers an hour they go slow down but they're not breaking the, the law but I think that we need to look at the perception and say well maybe the perception is is right and maybe we should just actually base this on there's an appetite for lowering speed limits, especially when the majority of our streets are shared. They're shared between pedestrians and cars. And I think if you're looking at people driving from 50 to 70 kilometers an hour in a shared space, I mean, we have been very fortunate. We haven't had significant issues to this point, but I do think a part of that is just luck. And I'd like to see, I think this is great. Mm -hmm. It's a step, but I think that we should look at lowering speed limits and having a, a, a different approach. Um, in combination potentially with with this so thank you very much for what you brought forward yeah. so yeah just just on that so I, I i'd almost call them two separate columns um by lowering the speed limit i don't think you're necessarily going to slow the cars down because the ones that are speeding are going to be speeding either way because they have the ability in a straight stretch just to get to those speeds the model that's proposed here is you pretty much go three blocks and you hit a stop sign so it, it naturally forces you to stop then you accelerate you might get up to 50 but as soon as you get up to 50 you're almost breaking again because you're hitting another stop sign that's that's the concept here but to your point um although we had a survey that said that majority of residents thought felt 50 was okay was that survey that was done correct 
the reality is, is there is a number of people that do think people are speeding when they are going 50 kilometers an hour. So it's two different things. I don't think lowering the speed limit will slow people down necessarily. <coughs> Probably the honest people. <laughs> um, but to your point is it, some of these people that are, that are feeling there's a lot of speeding, I know for a fact, some of them are going the speed limit. And on certain roads in town, if you're going 50 kilometers an hour, it does seem fast, right? So you're, you're spot on there, but I think they're almost two separate Two separate is 50 too fast, and, and and is this the right measure, if that makes sense? It does. The only thing I would worry about with the stop sign approach is, is the cutting, is the amount of hedges or trees or, or potentially parking that we would lose to accomplish this in a safe way. So that's that's my concern about the stop that, signs. Is, and that I never thought of. So do we do we know in these corners of Hedgegate, we'll call it, because that happened well before my time on council, but I read about it in Halifax. Um, do we think that any of these corners have those heritage heritage hedges that were cut we would have to, uh, through your worship we would have to do a, a full site visit to see each corner um I, I know some of the corners do have hedges that go straight up but it is within our your zoning bylaw that site triangles are supposed to be maintained so that would have to be a discussion with the property owners because we wouldn't necessarily be able to go on and cut those hedges depending on if they're on private property or if they're in the town easement that becomes more of a discussion with landowners typically because we own so many feet from the corners it's typically on our land but they're sometimes they're grown on private property that's what happened with a couple of cases that i that i know that i don't know deputy mayor if you were on council when that all happened but it was it was it was obviously a lot to go through that's a really good point though we should look into that to find out what the impacts are on that um i i guess what i would say is uh if councils consider it, maybe we'll just get them to come back and, and, and do that. But if we're not considering it, let's save them the exercise of going to check all these right. intersections. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, just in general comments, I guess, before we get into the specifics, because there is some different options here. You don't have to do them all, right? Um, I will say that out of the options I've heard, this one makes the most sense. Just simply the fact that speed bumps do damage the road. You also can't have them in the winter for plowing. This is a 12 month solution versus something that's only six months and damages the road. And then traffic calming measures, you've got concerns about obviously the cost to put those in, but also plowing. And we all know that if you wanna to try to beautify them this town, the deer will decimate whatever you put in them. So um, with no landscaping, would that be a really good look um, for the community? So this is, and then this is the most cost effective as well. So um, I guess, is there any other general comments? Otherwise I'll break it down into more specific chunks of it, but uh, Councillor Hina. Yes, Your Worship and Council. Um, regarding the hedge um, problem, I do believe that it would be a safety ma matter, no matter if we put a stop sign or not, that the hedges should be back to give a clear view because there's lots of times pedestrians are walking the street and they do not see, if the, if the hedge is too far out, they do not see a car. Uh, people with dogs don't see a car. Um, it has always been my understanding that whether there's a stop sign or anything, that if a hedge is uh, stopping the view, if you're going to make a left turn and there's no stop sign, you still have to be able to see around that particular corner. And I can honestly say that there are a few corners in the town on a motorbike that you cannot see around because of the hedges. And whether they're a heritage hedge or they're a hedge hedge, they still should be trimmed up it's like we talk about the uh, the trimming on 127 i mean there's always there's always a traffic risk if you can't see so whether we have a stop sign or we don't have a stop sign i still feel it's a valid point that the hedges need to be able to be looked around or the trees thank you fair point for sure um even though you don't have to stop it's it's good to obviously have visibility um so if Fair point for sure. Um, maybe as part of this exercise at some point, then, then staff could look at concerning ones and council can look at them. But I would say a policy for one should be a policy for all. It needs to be consistent, right? It can't be pick and choose depending on where it is and who it is, right? So, um, so council, uh, if, if there's no one else, I'll just start going into Councilor Neal. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I just want to echo again a little bit of what James mentioned. Um, I, I do feel that maybe lowering the stops or the speed limits might be a, a better approach. Um, again, looking at the report, uh, which staff provided us, which again, I thought was excellent. Um, I'm a big believer in empirical data over perception. Um, and reading through this, again, 
for Par Street and Montague, I mean, we're getting at the moment 95% compliance with the speed limit, which um, to me is kind of hard to argue against at the moment. But at the same time, if you look at the two, the medium and the higher risk ones, which are constituting less than 1%, um, I would almost argue if you're willing to go down Par Street at 10 plus kilometers over the speed limit, that a stop sign is not necessarily going to stop you. Um, and that's just speaking from experience watching people on Champlain. Um, Champlain, where the sight lines actually benefit them, Big um, <laughs> they can see that there's nobody else at the intersection and you can literally hear them speed up before approaching the stop sign. Um, so I'm you know, my first thought was if you're willing to do 20 plus kilometers down Par Street, if you don't see anybody at that intersection, I'm not sure a stop sign is really going to stop them. Um, adding 18 new stop signs to the town plat, it seems like a lot. Um, again, when looking at the data, I did have the same thought that Mr. Knopper had suggested there that perhaps the presence of the radar sign had people falling into compliance a bit more. But if that was the case, then, you know, I would argue that you would see the same thing at Mowat Drive. Um, granted, the sign may not have been as visible, but, you know, on Mowat Drive, where we're only getting like 55% compliance with the speed limit, um, that to me speaks a lot louder that we have an issue there as opposed to Par and Montague. Um, Par Street, for example, again, was done over 14 days. I would think over 14 days, the people that want to fly down Par Street would have realized that there is no enforcement coming with this and these numbers would have grown as the time went on. Um, so again, just looking at the empirical data, it, uh, you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm not necessarily opposed to them, but it doesn't appear that we really have that big an issue. I think, again, speaking with the RCMP and whatnot, it seems that the cars that are flying around town are a select few individuals. Um, I think we've all recognized the cars and I'm not sure stop signs is really going to slow them down. Um, the other aspect of this, which I mentioned last time is to me enforcement. We can put all the stop signs we want, but if nobody's going to enforce this, uh, the issue doesn't, it's certainly not cured in my opinion. Um, you know, I think we could do a lot better by simply having a bit more enforcement with the RCMP, randomly, you know, enforcing speed limits on these streets a couple times a month, I think would go a long way um, to keep people guessing. At the moment now, I think the select few that want to go through there at the high rates of speed know that there's, there is no enforcement present. Um, so it feels like a bit of a free for all. The only thing I, the last thing I would add again with the hedges, I've given some thought to that. I do agree. I mean, going and starting to cut back everybody's hedges could be a problem. Um, but from a motor vehicle accident perspective, um, my concern actually went to the fact that we could see an increase in motor vehicle accidents, at least in the short term with people that are coming up or down the town plat, stopping and expecting cars to stop coming along par Montague Queen. And perhaps again, the sight lines aren't that great, but cars pulling out and vehicles not stopping and we end up with a result in more vehicle accidents. Again, it was just my thoughts going through the report. Again, I'm a firm believer in the stats versus the perception and I would certainly agree. We, I think we have an issue coming down Mowat Drive um, but I'm not necessarily seeing a huge issue according to the data on Queen or Montague at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neal. I can definitely appreciate that. And someone who does respond to uh, accidents from time to time, I'm sure you have lots of experience in the town plot of knowing how frequent those are in certain areas in the community versus others. So appreciate that. And uh, I, I, I tend to agree. Um, I will say that in a small community and someone who grew up here, um, Back when we used to get in our cars and drive around, it wouldn't be unusual to go down the same street 12 to 15 times a night, as 
sad as that is to admit, um, I'm probably pretty sure that if you see eight high speeds on a street in the run of a night, it's very possible that's the same individual going up. And I don't doubt for a minute that if you're keeping track of uh, how fast they're going, some might try to set new highs. So, um, you know, take take to your point what it's worth. But it, the data is a lot better than perception for sure. And when you do look at the data, it does definitely indicate that the Mowat Drive area and uh, we just call it Highway 127s on the way in have more of a speed challenge than what the town plot does. Councillor Blanchard. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Um, just, I guess, provide my perspective. I, uh, I, I actually tend to think the, the stop signs might actually help more than lowering the speed limit. I feel like lowering the speed limit, what we would see is more people fall into the medium high risk category because they're, they're going to continue to speed, I think. It's just they're going to be instead of 10 kilometers over, they'll be 30 kilometers over now, right? So I don't know, again, to, to the point that was raised earlier, without more enforcement, I don't know if, if lowering the speed limit helps that much. I do think the idea of blowing through a stop sign and not being able to see what's coming from the other side might encourage someone to stop. Uh, if, if we're going to break break the law, I, I think they'll likely break the speed limit more than they'll blow through a stop sign just because I think there's more risk to them uh, and their vehicle uh, blowing through a stop sign and not being able to see what's coming around a corner instead of thinking about, you know, the damage they could do to somebody else still significant. Obviously, we talk about injuries or fatalities uh, uh, in association with, uh, with, with, uh, with the accidents that happen when those speeds get up. I, I think people are probably thinking less about that when they're speeding and more to their own safety and well-being and not being able to see around the corner. So I think the likelihood that they would stop for those stop signs is a little bit higher. And I think, like, we're only talking about, I, I just tally it up quickly in that area we're talking about 78 intersections in total in that area we're talking about adding additional stop signs um, to about 10 of those intersections so I don't think it's a it's a it's a significant increase I think I think it makes sense to be honest in some of those areas I think a four-way stop would be quite helpful and thank you for the report to staff it was excellent thank you some definitely some some healthy perspectives and the shorter is I think you're all right um, so um, you know, uh, with that being said, is there any other general comments? Otherwise, I will break it down a little bit just to get. And then on those, I, I'd like to hear from council, obviously. Um, so unless there's anyone else, uh, I want to start with the corner of uh, call it Reed and Harriet. Um, so the corner right down below the arena here. So the proposal would be to add a stop sign as you come up Harriet Street. Um, uh, when you're going up past the convenience store, you'd hang a left to go to Reed or, you know, continue up past the arena. A, a, a sign there. Question for council. Does everyone think that that should be a four-way stop? Like that one's completely different than the other thing. That's just a, a general traffic flow thing. Councilor Hurdle. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I just, that um, putting a stop sign there, which I agree with, um, will change the traffic flow. People will probably find alternate ways to get out of town. And I, I'm not sure. Do we know what some what's how someone might get into town if that's not the the throughway anymore? So there's really only three ways to go. So there's Jill's Point Road that you'd take up to Cedar. No, sorry. I mean, coming if you're not going to so say for example you're on Queen Street. Yeah. You might not come all the way down to Harriet and come up out that way anymore. You might go up King and then down Par. So there could be a shift in how traffic on the plat <laughs> goes towards uh, towards uh, Moet or Reed Reed going that way. So. Do we know that I think that'll have an impact more than just people continuing to go with, with the way they go, but stopping there, they'll come up and go down par maybe or some other way. I'm not well, sure if that's... Well, it's, it be, well, I mean, realistically, you're going to, it is the one main intersection without going up into the subdivision or going below. So will it change the traffic patterns and flow of how people go? Maybe. Um, I, I think because if, if you were to go with the perceived plan, like the, the plan that's before you, wouldn't matter which street they're going to hit, they're going to hit stop signs, they're going to hit a four-way stop. The only one that they wouldn't is if they went up Carlton and then cut back and around. The only reason why <laughs> Carlton wasn't selected is because it really isn't a throughway. And um, like for the example, the from the arena to um, uh, William Street, basically, I mean, half to three quarters of that's the Algonquin, right? You don't have, we don't see the same traffic flows that we see on the other adjacent streets. So in any format, if you were to go with this, they're going to end up hitting the stop sign coming through. And if it's a four-way stop, you're, you're, you're still hitting stop sign. So how it changes how people flow within the streets, yes. You, you might see people taking, you know, again, cutting up some of the, the shorts. But again, if you were to go with the way it's 
here, you're going to hit the, all the stop signs anyways, other other than Water Street, right? So, and then you're coming up all the way up Harriet. So, I mean, it may change a bit of how some people drive, but I think in the end, if you went with what's pre what's presented here, you're I don't think it's going to overly change the patterns of how people are flowing. Except for Canada Day after the fireworks. <laughs> That's just uh, crazy anyways. Should, there should be even, no matter what, a uh, police officer there directing traffic on that day just because it's chaos. Um, anyone else on that? Okay, just to... Oh, Councillor Heenan. Sorry, Your Worship. That's I okay. just... Um, I totally agree that a stop sign would help a lot. I just worry it's going to add confusion to that corner. Um, the, the reason that I say that is we have a lot of confusion with the three-way stop. Like people that are going down, Harriet, they don't know whether to go. You know, like there's, there's a lot involved and I just worry that it's going to be a conglomeration at some point because I've seen when tourists don't know whether it's a stop sign or not and they stop the messes that happen at that corner. And I'm all for slowing traffic and I'm all for safety. So it's, I'm just worried about the confusion it's going to cause because everybody's going to have to look at four people and they're going to have to decide who's going first. So when Councillor Neal said the probability of accidents increasing uh, yeah. in the short term, he's 100% right yes. because of the changes. Yes. Um, any changes you make, that's, that, that, is, that is true for sure. I will, and I also will agree as someone who goes um, every day at the Prince of Wales and call it Harriet intersection, the four way there, uh, there's a lot of awkward exchanges and people don't know the way that it flows around. They're like, you go. And then you go this, this, this traffic corner is going to be even worse for that. And you also experience that at the corner of Prince of Wales and King street sometimes by the schools where it's like, no, oh, go ahead. And people are trying to be nice, but it gets right awkward. Then you try to go. Then they it, like, you're gonna yeah then you all go and stop like it, it's gonna happen there it's gonna happen no matter what but a lot of tourists i will say that aren't aren't aware and haven't been through that intersection that's not a common traffic practice you see where one goes and three stop the way it is it's you don't see that a lot when you travel um so that will avoid some of the confusion and it's just uh, important to note too that if you make these changes in the winter the way St. Andrews is with obviously an influx of people that both live here and visit in the summer, it's probably longer term. These, these incidents where people aren't, aren't aware that it's changed because they've been coming here so many summers or so many years. And all of a sudden, so you probably get two, uh, I guess say almost two times a year where that's going to probably increase, uh, at least at first. Um, so council, I guess back to that intersection though. Um, I agree. Um, yeah, for sure. I know, I'll sit way back when I say this, but have we ever considered traffic lights? No, but on that corner. Like, I mean, it, it does seem overhead traffic lights seems to me to be the, the issue. If they're coming up Harriet and they're coming down and they have a green light, then it clear throws. Then when the light goes red, they both stop and then they can, it'll go green to go across par. I mean, to me, that is the ideal because it will be no more guesswork. No one going, oh, you go. No, you go. Like, it would be, and as I say, to, I'm sure that tomorrow morning will be interesting when they say you're going to, you want to put a traffic light in, but I just see that that corner is such an awkward area. We'll make sure someone walks you to your car this evening. Okay. Yeah, that's no, right. I'm anyway, but I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, like, you know, it, it has nothing to do with, it, it's just a safety thing. And like they have in Fredericton, they had to replace <laughs> a few of the four-way stops with overhead lights that are on. And you see, then you can also install a walk light. And that's the only corner that I would ever want to see having a traffic light. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Okay, so we have, uh, uh, I guess you could say, uh, another option. Uh, Councillor Heenan's uh, not saying to do traffic light. He's saying, have we considered it, right, just to be clear. Um, okay, we, uh, we've got a few of these to go. So we, uh, <laughs> again, appreciate uh, everybody weighing in. We're going to try to get some consensus just so we can get something out to the public. Um, first of all, how many uh, think that a street light should be considered for there, just to get that one on or off the table? Is anyone else with Councillor Heenan? I kind of like the small town feel of no street lights myself. 
not seeing anyone else, Counselor Hand. That one has been a good suggestion to think outside the box. Um, back to the four-way stop. How many here think the four-way stop would be something worth considering? Okay. How many, how many think leave it as is would be something worth considering? Okay, so I'm getting majority is saying that they'd like four-way stop, keeping in mind that this is not a bylaw that's being passed. This is something to put out to the public to get some feedback on. It goes through three readings plus a hearing objections. The public will have an opinion on this one, as you can imagine, both ways. Um, so uh, thank you, Council. Let's move down the hill uh, to the corner of Harriet and call it Water Street. Um, so for me, it's by the tea house, um, that intersection right there. How many think that should just remain as is, and how many think that should be a three-way stop? So let's do the three-way stop to be consistent. How many think there should be a stop sign going down the hill? How many think leave that one the way it is today? I'm seeing majority wants to leave that one the way it is today, uh, Mr. Knopper. Now let's move to the concept, and we can amend it if, if you want, Council, but I'm wondering if I'll call it every three blocks a stop sign is, is, is what essentially all these, I guess you call it the one, two, three, four, eight, these eight remaining ones are to break up really the, the traffic coming down par, for example. Um, how many think... Uh, how many think that there should be four-way stops throughout the town? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, thank you. Would it? I'm just going to throw out an idea here, but would it be worth if we were able to get the radars back again? Um, would it be worth, say, trying a bit of a phased-in approach where we put the two four-way stops on Par Street and monitor Par and Montague a second time? Um, my initial thought would be again. If you don't like that four-way stop, the traffic is going to divert and they're going to go down Montague instead. So the numbers now are showing, I mean, we've got about 150 cars more a day traveling par versus Montague. You would expect that to change. And you should also see a difference in the speeds. It's just an idea, I thought. So Again, say, I'm, I'm so say like a supporter like, of the data. So. You'd, so you'd say put on like Par and William and then see if people actually in between those have slowed down significantly. Well, if it's something that we want to try, then yeah, let's try yeah. a bit of a phased in approach and try again. Par Street is probably the most heavily trafficked. So try Par Street and see if it actually does cause a shift. Uh, well, we can go with whatever. He, he's just proposing Par because it has the most. Just, just try four ways. The only problem with that is if you do it on just that street, it's probably going to increase the amount of traffic on Prince of Wales and, and blow it is the only is the only downfall a bit. But that's well, that's actually what I'd be looking for to see if it actually did cause a traffic shift. Okay, where people are specifically just trying to get around it to if be able to continue to hit dropping 50. down to Montague just to travel at a higher rate of speed or straight down. Again, if we had the radar up again for another week on each street, it would show you the shift. The interesting point on that is if you were, say, dropping your kids off at school and you hung a left, you're going to hit a four-way stop up there. So you're actually still going to hit just as many four-way stops to get to school. So it shouldn't deter you from going down Par Street because either way you're going to hit one <laughs> unless you go down and then over, and that makes no sense. Um, yeah, that's a proposal for sure. Uh, Councilor Blanchard. I was just going to say, I, I mean, um, it's not a bad idea just to see sort of people's um, – behaviors in terms of how they respond I guess what we're proposing here though um, you know if we went with the full allotment as 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 proposed or at least put it forward like I said to the public we're not putting forward anything here tonight or passing anything um, we're not going to give people the option to avoid right they're going to be it's, it's going to it's going to force compliance so I, I as much as it would be interesting to see what people would do um, and, and I, I appreciate Councillor uh, Neal's uh, uh, proposal I guess what we're proposing here is we're not giving people an option. We're going to force them to, 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 to hit a stop sign. So there isn't going to be a way that they can go. And I would expect that patterns would probably remain similar in terms of traffic patterns, similar to what they are now, because they aren't going to have the option to avoid. So whether we phase it in or not, I, I think it's if we phase it in, I would expect to see, yeah, we're probably going to see more traffic on one particular street. And I don't think that that's necessarily what the people on that street would want to see, which, whichever way we went. So uh, to me, if we're going to do it, we would do it all, or, or we wouldn't do it at all. So um, anyways, that's just my thoughts. Uh, absolutely. Uh, just to reply to Councillor Blanchard, again, don't disagree at all. Um, my next thought, again, if we're going to do this, I'd still like to see the radars come back and put them up again after we've implemented the four-way stops. I mean, again, we're, 
we've got 95, 96% compliance. Let's see if we actually gain that last 4%. We'd have no problem in approaching the service commission to use the trailer again. Councilor Hurdle. Just a quick question, uh, um, Mr. Knopper. Uh, the province now allows automated traffic enforcement as of last week, I think. Have we thought about uh, any kind of costing, costing out of with the province of how that would work, or if it's possible for us? At this time, no. We haven't approached that, and it would have to be something council would have to be willing to allow within the community to test. Um, if that's something that council would like us to do, we can cost it out, find out what it's what these speed cameras are are and costing, and bring it back to council for consideration. A uh, quick question on that, then follow up is. Is it safe to say that that would be regulated by the RCMP, not by law enforcement, because it's provincial law the speed, or is it? Uh, more than likely, yes, because uh, even even within our bylaw now, the only thing our bylaw enforcement officer can really enforce under the motor vehicle is parking. Yeah. So speeding and anything else would be still enforceable under the RCMP. That's a good suggestion to deter it. A couple tickets for speeding around town will stop all this, <laughs> and it gets around pretty quick. But cost is a cost is something worth considering for sure so council um back to i guess the conversation there's a few different proposals out here to do a trial on one street and then monitor it before you do it to the rest there's also the completely alternative model which would get rid of the need for this if you could put a couple of those in the community i think it would now mind you we're such a small community people would figure out where they are pretty quick uh, unless you can move them around, which I don't know, again, if you can do that, that would be probably the ideal situation where you mount it on top of a stop sign or on something and you're able to get the data. But um, if it's the same spot, I think it would get pretty stagnant on that street with the people that are prolific offenders. Um, so, Council, just on this, back to the original, just to get consensus so we can keep this moving. Staff, I think we should, obviously, Mr. Knopper, Maybe look at what the cost is for doing that, as well as maybe ask the local RCMP if this is something that they would be enforcing versus it, it's only as good as it's a waste of money if they're not going to actually enforce it. But um, so, Council, back to the original. Um, how many would like to see just a, a one street kind of trial to see what it does on one street? Keeping in mind that changing the vehicle bylaw would take at least three months anyway. This could be a pilot project for, for one street. So through your worship, we can change the schedule of the bylaw with one reading. So that would be adding a stop sign in. You can do that. It's more for the main structure of the bylaw with some other stuff that it has to come forward for changes. So if you wanted to pilot it, you could. It would be one reading, one bring forward now. Any new sign that is put in, if you saw it, uh, Augustus uh, at Montague this year, all the new stop signs installed also had new, brand new, new signs on them, and you have to put those up for at least a year for traffic purposes, so that everybody realizes this is the new traffic pattern, this is the new stage. Was all the truth is, if you're going to install a stop sign, it should be under the pretext that it's going to stay there, because you don't want to keep changing everything, right? It's here this week, it's gone next week, it's back, like, it's it's got to be, it's got to be consistent, so... Council, I'm struggling to get some consensus from you here, but I'm going to try um, just so we can move forward with the, with the meeting. It's some good dialogue, though. So, uh, Your Worship, just within this council, if you want, again, I come back to, we can go back to more public consultation once you guys establish a plan that you would like the community to see. We can set that up and, and get feedback, whether it's through survey, through ho hosting an open house, um, and just having communication with the public. So just note that there's many opportunities we have to get feedback before you make a decision going forward. And Go ahead. Your so let me try this way then. Um, how many, I'll, I'll say what the two options are. How many would like to see the four -way stop, new four-way stops implemented, uh, at least for the version while we do public consultation? And then how many would rather instead have staff reach out to find out about these cameras to find out what they cost? Can you move them? Instead, because I don't think you need them. Well, you might still need them both, but I think I think one might prevent the other, right? Um, so, council, I guess, how many would like to see the four-way stops just to get some? Ooh, wow! One, two, three. Hold your hands up there. Yeah, that's enough. All right, thanks, council. Good, again, good good conversation. Did it, is there anything, Mr. Knopper? Or are those the three main ones that you need consensus on tonight? So those are the three main ones. The other aspect is actually Mowat Drive. So with on Bayview and um, uh, on one twenty seven coming in from Shamcook. Uh, in the report, it highlighted 
the question, does council want to look at those solar speed reader signs to be installed in those locations? We can apply to the MPSA grant fund for that. So it may not actually cost the municipality anything or very little the, in the end, but... This one should be fairly quick, council. There's it, the data actually says there's a bigger problem there than there is in the town plot, and I'm seeing you take action in the town plot, so for me that, that makes a lot of sense. But a quick show of hands. Okay, so we, we can pursue that. Thank you, Worship. Uh, and there is just one more that came out of the conversation. How many actually think that the speed limit should be 40 kilometers an hour in the town of St. Andrews? One, two, three, four, five. How many think it should be 50 kilometers an hour? Five, three. Let's, for this amendment, let's go 40, see what happens. Okay. It'll be 40 in the entire community, yeah. Well, outside of one Highway 127, that would remain 70 when it hits there. But it go down yeah, 40, 70. All right, Council, thank you for that. That was uh, what I did know would be the longest part of the evening. Uh, but we uh, shouldn't rule out the fact that we have one more, and it's under Economic Development, Business, and Culture Committee. And on page 28, it is saying that it is Councillor Ware. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, reference number eight. EBC 240906, bylaw number 25-05, BIA bylaw for second and third reading. Background is as part of the downtown beautification initiatives, the St. Andrews Business Improvement Area collects an annual levy from its members to pay for various projects and events. The BIA established in 1984 is a geographical area between Water Street from Princess Royal Street to Elizabeth Street. All businesses within this area are within the BIA and subject to the annual levy. As per the Business Improvement Act of New Brunswick, the council must set the levy annually by bylaw, which also includes approval of their budget and a public hearing of objections. Please see the attached bylaw and budget for further information. The bylaw process has started with first reading on September 23rd, 2024. Public hearing of objections is today, October 21st, 2024. Second reading and third and final reading. If Council is satisfied with the information received from the public hearing of objections and any correspondence submitted, Council can move to the second and third reading. I assume everybody is satisfied, so the motion is that the Council of the Town of St. Andrews grants leave for the second reading of bylaw number 24-05 a bylaw of the town of St. Andrews to impose a special business improvement levy for 2025 in the town of St. Andrews. I so move. Thank you, a seconder. Good Councilor Heenan. Discussion? All in favor of going to second reading, please signify by saying aye. aye. That's everybody. Um, so by title, this is bylaw number 24-05, a bylaw of the town of St. Andrews to impose a special business improvement levy. Next and final motion of the evening. The, that the Council of the Town of St. Andrews grants leave for the third and final reading of bylaw number 24-05, a bylaw of the Town of St. Andrews to impose a special business improvement levy for 2025 in the Town of St. Andrews. I shall move. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Councillor Weir. Uh, second here will be Councillor Harland, I believe. Did I see the hand, Councillor yeah. Harland? That was quick. That was, that was, you were ahead of me. I know. Yeah. Uh, discussion on going to third reading? All right, here we go. All in favor of going to third and final reading, please signify by saying aye. That's everybody. And once again, I will only do it by title. This is bylaw number 24-05. It's a bylaw of the town of St. Andrews to impose a special business improvement levy that was read the third and final time on the 21st day of October of 2024. All right. So we are now through um, all of the consideration of passing of bylaws. 
There's no new business. We're in question period. Was anything submitted throughout the course of this meeting or is anyone online, Mr. Knopper? Through you, Your Worship, nobody is online and nothing through email. And would anyone in the audience this evening wish to ask any questions specific to tonight's agenda? If you just, if, if you do, just come up to the podium just in case someone's watching at home to hear. And welcome, Mrs. Sims. My name is Susan Sims. Um, I had a couple of questions. I don't know what's appropriate and what's not, so I'll just put it out there and you can let me know. Um, in the speeding survey, I wondered if they noted anybody going significantly under the speed limit. That's uh, a very good question, Mr. Knopper. Do you, you were closer to this file. Do you want to answer that one? It's within the data. I think there was. <laughs> Through you, Your Worship, it depends on which area. They really rated the speeds, anything of up to 50 kilometers, and then anything above that uh, was at a 10% threshold and a 20% threshold, and depending on the times and days. But you're looking at, if, if you're looking at Moet Drive, for instance, coming in, um, so out of a total of 12, so out of the, the entire days that it was done, out of 12,144 uh, readings taken for total number of vehicles, 6,649 6, uh, vehicles were rated to go in compliance, so that's 50 kilometers or less. It didn't say anything below 50 kilometers at what it was, just it said 50 kilometers or less. Just because I have noted that people going under the speed limit can be a hazard as well as people exceeding the speed limit. Uh, sometimes it makes other people aggravated and they want to pass even within town streets and um, you know they, they, they exceed the speed limit to pass the person who's going under the speed limit so I just wondered why that was excluded from your survey because my um, experience has been that that can be a problem Thank you, uh, Ms. Sims. It, it's not that we excluded it. It was just what we had from the RCMP, or not the RCMP. So this is from the Service Commission, and this is from the data that they collected on behalf from the ratings, and they only gave us a rating of compliance, low risk, medium risk, and high risk. They didn't note or delineate beyond uh, under 50 kilometers an hour, but it's, it's something we can ask. It's a fair point commission. for consideration. I Correct. actually, during the daytime, run into more drivers that are, to that point, going 15 kilometers an hour than I do that are going 70. We can ask it the is a hazard. That, that it's good observation. It's something yeah. to consider. We can sure. ask the service commission if there's a possibility to give us that rating information. Let's see if we can get that reading. Yep. Another question I have is about um, exceeding the speed limit. Um, it's been noted that 5% uh, exceed the speed limit. Um, it wasn't noted what problem that caused other than people not liking it. Like, did it actually cause a problem that they were speeding? I, I can't speak specifically to those individuals if it did. Um, in reality, I do think the amount of uh, I guess you say accidents within the town plot are fairly low uh, overall. Um, but with that being said, you know, all it takes is the wrong person, the wrong time, wrong youth crossing the road and, and something could happen. But to your point, the incidents that I'm aware of are fairly low. But that in the is town assuming plot. that accidents are caused by speeding. But there's other reasons for accidents such as texting or inattention or drinking and driving uh, unfamiliarity yeah. or somebody yep. pulling out there's there's many reasons so I'm just wondering how many how much of a problem the speeding specifically has created I would say that it probably depends on which resident in town you talk to uh, we get regular um, occurrences where people do report that they're almost run over uh, especially in the evening there was a, a specific incident where there was Councillor Neal's points, uh, I think it was only a few handful of individuals, but some were literally re wreaking havoc every night where there was multiple messages sent to me saying I almost got hit by a car. So depending on the situation, some have no impact. There's no one on the street, no one around. Some have been close calls for sure. Uh, another question I have is um, Councillor Heenan mentioned about the hedges. Um, I have found um, in particular coming up Queen Street, going out of town, uh, when you stop by the parish hall um, and there are tour buses parked there, you can't see anything until you're in the middle of King Street. It's extremely dangerous. 
and I wondered if uh, you would consider um, changing, um, allowing the tour buses to park there. Perfect. That's a good suggestion as well. I, I myself going down that, I've, I've seen that on s several occasions for sure. So that's that's good feedback for sure. Um, um, the other um, question I just had briefly was um, you talked about the BIA levy um, levy. Mm -hmm. yep. um, is there an, a dollar amount associated with that? There is. Uh, so their uh, total expenses annually are $31,643.60. So that is how much is collected. Uh, and they do have a public uh, meeting AGM every year. It's coming up actually in a couple November weeks. 7th. What is it? November 7th. November 7th. So November 7th, there's an AGM at Sunbury Shores at 530 in connection with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, where they actually go through that in more detail. But um, they do have different expenditures that are submitted in an annual budget that goes anywhere from marketing promotion, special events, administration, and beautification. I will say that they do have the lowest administration, I think, probably in the province. It's about $500 annually, which is a lot lower than most BIAs that I know across the province. So what you were discussing, there is already a business improvement fee every business pays, and you're talking about an increase? No, no, no. So no. it's not an increase. An the another one as well. No. So every year, the under the business improvement lev or into the business improvement act of the province of New Brunswick, each year each municipality has to bring forward the renewal bylaw for the levy that is collected within the geographical area of the of the BIA itself, and it's been maxed out at twenty cents per hundred assessment uh, for few decades so they're already collecting the maximum amount within the geographical zone that has was established back in 1984 so it's it's been a levy that's been in place since then it's just every year at this time we actually have to renew it and have it asked to be added to the the tax rolls of the businesses within that so area. it's just housekeeping correct um oh yeah and the other question was um did it note whether people sped more like trying to when they're coming into town like approaching town or if they're leaving town so the uh, through your worship like they, not the, just yeah. 127 but within town like on the town streets and everything like do they approach more like trying to get to the community college or leaving the community college or things like that so we the way it was set up is it was actually facing where traffic would be coming towards the community college and that's where it was set up both on Montague and on um, Park Street so it didn't it didn't check the speed in both directions, it's only okay, it's, one direction. It's, it's only an omnidirectional side, so you would actually have to turn the whole thing so you could get it. It's, it's only a one directional. Uh, and how was it decided which direction to to check? Staff placed it and it's just set it up that way that they were checking speeds coming this way. But again, we are open to getting it back. And we just have to schedule it, and we can test the speeds going out in another direction. It was just for this round, we did it in these three locations, arbitrarily setting them up as people were approaching the New Brunswick Community College, actually more approaching just King Street at this point. That's it for my questions. Thanks for attending this evening. All right, council. Now we are jumping into councillors' comments. Any member of council wish to speak? Councillor Weir. I'll try to keep this short. Uh, I would like us to put the budget on the agenda in much more detail than it currently is. Uh, I think there's structural errors in the budget. I think there is a structural bias in the budget and this all came from at the time of the annexation uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick come down here put a budget together with our our treasurer uh, everybody conceded that it was forced upon us probably without proper review or anything. And the part that bothers me and why I brought it up in April that we should get some grant money and look at it is suddenly that budget for 2023 that everybody agreed was in 
it wasn't complete, let's put it that way, was used as a basis for the 2024 budget, and now the 2024 budget's being used for the 2025 budget. So we're still dealing with Mr. Fitzpatrick's budget as the basis of doing our budget. And it is, there, there's errors in it, there's no question. When there's only $27,000 charged to public works and streets for all the work done by town hall, that's, that's a, a minimum wage employee working about 40 hours. And for, we've spent this entire council meeting on it. You know the the, um, the streets and uh, that type of thing. Uh, no one has ever looked at the hundred and eighteen thousand dollars being charged to the fire department by the water department. Is it a proper amount? Uh, you know we all. You know we're we're paying a third of that basically out in the wards, and uh, you know my neighbor and I are building a fire pond, and uh, yeah. Are we wasting our money or not? Uh, so I think as I go down through the budget and go, go through the process, how it all started in 2023, everybody said, yes, it's flawed. It was forced upon us, the whole thing. But yet we continue to use it as the basis going forward. And we, we have yet to sit down and, and do something that was very popular in the 1980s, which was called zero-based budgeting. You start out that you don't have to spend anything, and then you build from there. And uh, some businesses still use it today. Uh, but uh, there is an inherent bias when you pay $27,000 for uh, uh, the works department and the streets for what happens at, at town hall for those two departments. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, the, the tenders, the meetings with engineers, all that stuff, got to be worth more than $27,000 a year. It's, I won't put a, a descriptive adi adjective on it. But I, I think we have to. You know, it's time that the, somebody used the expression at the last meeting, Time the rubber hit the road, and uh, it has to on this budgetary process. The other thing that that made it jump out at me even more was one of the meetings out in Bayside in the past month or so. The comment was made, you know, is there any additional services you want? But remember, it's going to cost you if you want any. I've never heard that said here at a council meeting to the residents of the town. You know, one service. Nobody warns them it's going to cost them anything. But we were warned right up front. We ask for anything, we're going to pay for it. <laughs> and uh, that's that's not. I don't know what the word to describe it is. Uh, I went on the facilitation committee late because our chair in Bayside went missing in action, came on late, I worked hard to get this put together. Uh, the mayor was at the meeting where we chose the name for the new municipality. That topic lasted less than five minutes on the agenda because I made sure I was the first one to speak and emphatically insisted it be the town of St. Andrews. Uh, a historic town, knowing that we would be respected as Bayside and Shamcook. And I, I, I commend council for, for the way they've handled that. It was the way I anticipated, and that's why I didn't want to get into a big deba debate on what the name of this municipality should be. And, uh, we did it in less than five minutes. I would set, we, we set the record for the province, I would think, in, in doing that. But I think in, we, we do have to move away from Mr. Fitzpatrick. We do have to move away from his 
budget. He had no municipal experience. He was a banker with an international bank. I assume the Bank of Hong Kong, but I'm not sure. Just I, I can appreciate where you're coming from, but just out of respect for him, we should probably take a personal well, okay, the facilitator. Close. Just because, yeah, yeah, just because. The facilitator. Yeah. I'm, I apologize. Yeah, no, that's for that. fine. Just for a. You know, but uh, so that's my, you know, it, it's something that's been bothering me. The more I look at the budget, I, I see problems, and I just think it's time we addressed the the problems that we inherited from that process. That's all I have to say, and uh, hopefully we can get it on the agenda at some point. And, and thank, thank you, Councillor Ware, and we, we can. We absolutely can. Uh, that's that's the short. The, the long is uh, I do recall the conversation with naming the community. I, I do recall that you were – I went into that meeting, and I was uh, really worried about um, all the names, but obviously losing the branding St. Andrews. There's a lot of communities that are called something that I don't even remember. I, with time, I'm sure I will. You really don't want to live in a community that has a historic – you know history that that does but you were the first to say that uh we should name it st andrews but i was the first to say that we shouldn't be calling it ward one and ward two we should be calling it the sham cook and bayside ward because both of them have history as well right so i think that's why as well it, it went very quick i will say on the budget um council did ask specifically for staff to show the people in the lsds why their taxes were going up with no new services that is the only explanation financially that we have been provided to the point but your point is it perfect no it's not i will say though that for me that isn't the basis of where we're going at the end i i thought that we had some council alignment that we weren't going to go to that level um i guess my only concern is if we are going to take a lot of time a lot of staff's time and a lot of our own time making sure that all these buckets are right because they do go both way um the old residents of st Andrews now coming up this year are paying significantly more for the amount of gar for, for the removal of garbage because they are offsetting Shamcook Bayside because we are one community now. At some point, we have to lose that whole. This is what St. Andrews is paying for Shamcook Bayside and vice versa. We have to get there. But I thought we were kind of under alignment that we weren't going to go to that rate. So that's why for me it wasn't as big of a of a finish line. I will say though, if we're going to spend all the time sorting out all the buckets, are we doing that because the end game is we are going to get where whatever that model is, is that's what St. Andrew should, the old St. Andrew should pay and that's what Shamcook Bayside should pay? Because that's why I would do that exercise if we're all aligning that we're going to spend time getting everything 100% where it should be, then to me that means everyone should be paying what it costs if we're going to spend the time doing it. But to me, I didn't think we were ever getting there. So that model, I agree, it's not perfect at all. There is some things that across the province that are new, uh, you know, I guess ideologies or at least new process that was mandated in like the wharf and the arena are now paid for uh, partially by the residents of Shamquick Bayside as well. So I thought we got to more of a common place where that end game wasn't going to happen anyway. But if we are going to do the exercise and figure out every penny of where everything should be, it should be for a reason. So if we're going to do that, then let's all be prepared to pay for what that number is. Otherwise, why are we doing it, right? Like that's just my whole, why are we going to get into the sense and argue, hey, this should be here, this should be here, if we're not going to all pay for it the way that that model says. You know where I'm getting with that? Like, that's just the other side of it. If, if we're going to get to the penny, we should be paying the penny. Otherwise, why are we going to the penny? That, that's, my, that's my point. I do not think Shamcook and Bayside War should have a higher mill rate, in my own personal opinion, than St. Andrews. But if we do do that exercise, that is what it's going to say, based on what, the, what is happening across this province. So I do understand it's not perfect, but there was no intention I heard from council so far that we were going to do that model. That was just an explanation to why they were going up. Is that was the whole basis of it. And what it was good, it got people upset, it got them a little frustrated, but it got them engaged. And there's some value in that. And what was presented wasn't just dropped out of the air. That was the, that was the formula that you and I saw um, that I spoke of and was told that I was fear-mongering. Like that, that, that is, we put the numbers out, and there was no reason when municipal reform was happening why the province couldn't have put that out. They had that same information, it just they didn't release it we did so i guess my follow-up is I, i'm fine doing that but but what's the outcome of that i guess would be my follow-up what are we trying to get out of that if we're if we're, if we're not going to be one community and we're going to figure out every penny from now on of what everything costs is it because we're prepared to pay for each different ward what that number says that's what i'm wondering and if i might comment i guess what 
I shouldn't say upset me, but what tweaked me to this was when we did have the meeting out in Bayside, and we were told, if you want anything, you're going to pay for it. And I think it was an inappropriate comment, and, uh, you know, that's not how we've been working here at the council table. And uh, that's not how we, how we build a unified group of people. I can appreciate that. Maybe it's the way it came across, but I will say in fairness um, to the individual that said it, that when, when I got the presentation from all those organizations that desperately need money, and I, I do feel for those organizations, the first thing I said is it's going to cost us 1.5% on the mill rate. So it might have been a different way, but every dollar we give it, whether it be in the wards, whether it be in, in St. Andrews, someone is paying for it, right? So it could have been the way it came across, especially in such sensitive environment, but you want public works, you're going to pay for it. Well, yeah, fortunate reality is someone's going to pay for it, right? So um, I, I do understand the context and, and the mood in the room, so I can appreciate that. But it's not the only time that we do that. Councilor Harlan. Thank you. Um, I, I would agree that uh, perhaps it wasn't the best wording. However, I have also heard both at this in this uh, council chamber and by our CAO who has talked with, you know, who speaks with, um, has a very open door policy and speaks with residents on an ongoing basis. He's very clear that if somebody wants something, then what are they prepared to um, uh, not have or not continue to have, right? Because I think he, he uh, my experience has been that Mr. Spear has uh, approached it with, we have to be balanced. So yes, we might want a very elaborate uh, recreation plan, but there's no new money. So what, what do we not continue to, to fund or support in order to um, provide that? So I, I, I didn't have the same response to that uh, comment as perhaps, you, as obviously you did. Um, I just saw it as um, a reality around nothing will come for the residents of the the St. Andrews Ward or for the wards of Shamcook or Bayside, nothing will come for free because that right now we have no new money. Thank you. Anyone else? It's a good healthy conversation. I, I you know what, let's just put it in the next budget meeting. Like let's like point taken, there's there's some conversation to have there. I think it's worthwhile to add it in for sure. But I guess my question is for everybody before we do that is what is the outcome of doing this, right? Like what, why are we doing it other than, because it's going to say, <laughs> it's going to say that what Sham Cook Bayside should be paying is higher than what this council, I thought we kind of had a consensus on. So that's my question is just what are we getting out of it? Right? So, but let's answer it. Let's put it in. I have no problem with that. It, it's healthy conversation that the reality is, is this is what the facilitator should have been doing in the first place. These conversations. Now we're stuck doing it. Like we said, neighbor versus neighbor. Um, there was a lot of things done. I could say it. It's eight o'clock. Now there was a lot of things that were really wrong with that process. We both know it because we were in it and you were right for a while there during that process as someone, I thought at times I was the only one on the call that had a voice for Bayside and that wasn't right. Because there was a gap there for a while until you got on the scene. I acknowledge that. Anyone else? About anything, uh, Deputy Mayor, anything for you? All right. Well, thank you. I have no comment. Well, go ahead. Put your mic on and tell people. <laughs> There's a powwow this weekend in St. John. So um, it's at TD Station. And it'll start around noontime. It's online, so you can get all the information on it. Um, but there is a pow powwow for... Um, the St. John area and uh, it's hosted by the city of St. John as well as the indigenous people of St. John so um, it's something to go to a powwow and it's our first powwow in this area so it'll be lovely to go to so Saturday around noontime at TD station and then it'll be a Sunday again but look online for all the information thank you very much your worship Councilor I, forgot. I just wanted to um Thank the organizing committee for Indulge. It was a f phenomenal, 
phenomenal event. Um, it was wonderful that we had such beautiful weather to uh, support the event as well. Um, and our town crew did an amazing job in both setting up and taking down um, after the event. Uh, it all seemed so seamless. To the outside eyes, it all seemed seamless. I'm sure for the organizers it was not. But um, just heard lots and lots of positive comments, so thank you. Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. I know Sierra Riebling at Kingsbury Garden, she does a lot of work uh, year-round with processing things because it is it is a year-round organization. But the organizing committee, a lot of times, is just one individual at Stress of Bevington. Like, it's not, it's not a big, large group. She does have a, a little bit of support, but for the most part, she's the one that puts that together, and the festival continues to reach new heights. And I would say that some of the changes I saw, in particular on the Friday night, uh, made the event even better um so it's moving in the right direction i think there's a capacity after seeing this year to even expand it more so more people can participate as that's the number one complaint for the festival is they want to participate and can't get there but um the reality is is if you let everyone go it'll be such a terrible experience for everybody it wouldn't be a success so uh, i feel for her and uh i can tell you that she also gets um, the odd person that isn't very respectful about that process too. So just so to your point, uh, just to know that she is appreciated for all our work she does around Indulge Festival, and every year it does donate uh, at minimum five figures towards the, our local Sanders Food Bank. So not only are we eating a lot, we're helping other people get through uh, hopefully uh, a tough time of year because we typically hold off that till January because usually Christmas time you see a lot, and then January, February, March you don't see as much giving. We intentionally give the check every year then to help carry them over until, until the spring. So thank you for bringing that up. All right. Um, I'll be looking for uh, no reason to go to closed sessions. I'll be looking for a motion to adjourn. Deputy Mayor Akaji and Councillor Gumashell, all in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, Council.